Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing us to present the first randomized controlled trial on pelvic floor muscle training to prevent and treat pelvic organ prolapse in postpartum prima paris women. With no disclosure uh, among this group, but this was a fully financed uh, project from the Norwegian Research Council. Prevalence of pelvic organ prolapse is high, with anatomic prolapse reaching 30%, but symptomatic prolapse is much lower, with 5 to 10%. Vaginal birth is considered a main risk factor for pelvic organ prolapse. And three to six months postpartum, studies have found that between 18 and 56% have pelvic organ prolapse stage equal to or more than two. In addition, recent studies have found that between 15 and 39.5% may have major defects to the levator ina muscle on ultrasonography, and this is also associated with pelvic organ prolapse. To date, there are eight randomized controlled trials showing positive effect of pelvic floor muscle training in treatment of pelvic organ prolapse in middle-aged women. In addition, we have conducted a morphological study showing reduced levator height uh, area and muscle length, increase in pelvic floor muscle strength and thickness, and lifting the position of the bladder and the rectal ampulla. Thus, we think that maybe early treatment and prevention would be possible. However, to date there are no studies on pelvic floor muscle training during pregnancy and after childbirth. The aim of the present study was therefore to assess the effect of a four-month postpartum pelvic floor muscle training program on symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse and POPQ stage. The design of the study, this is the secondary analysis of an assessor blinded randomized control trial stratified on major levator ANI defects, and the classification was according to DEETS. The women were randomized to either intervention or control. 175 primary Paris women participated in the study. The power calculation was made for the primary analysis on urinary incontinence. However, the prevalence of urinary incontinence and prolapse seems to be almost equal. The inclusion in criteria were singleton pregnancy, healthy mother and child, and to be able to understand Scandinavian languages. Exclusion criteria was cesarean section and third and fourth degree perineal tear. The outcome measures were ICIQ vaginal symptoms, and we looked at bulging inside and outside the vagina. And this was posed in an electronic questionnaire to the women. We used POPQ, performed by trained gynecologists, and 3 and 4D transperineal ultrasonography for blood and neck position using the method of SHEAR, also performed by trained gynecologists. The intervention lasted from six weeks till six months postpartum, and both groups had individual assessment and teaching by a physiotherapist and a gynecologist. The control group had usual care. The intervention was one additional individual assessment by the treating physiotherapist, home exercises, uh, three sets of eight to 12 contractions per day, and then, in addition, a 45-minute group training class once a week with trained physical therapists, and this is according to former published studies showing positive effect on urinary incontinence. We did intention to treat analysis, and I'm presenting the overall data, and I'm giving you the absolute data today. Dropout was 8.6%, with 12 in the pelvic floor muscle training group and 3 in the control group. Adherence was, adherence was high with 96% uh, of the pelvic floor muscle training group adhering to more than 80% of both home, home and group training. The control group, uh, in the control group, 16.5% reported that they have also trained the pelvic floor muscles regularly during the intervention period. If we go to the results of bulging, there was a significant difference in number of women with bulging inside the vagina before the uh, start of the study, but no changes within or between groups. Outside the vagina, the bulging was the same uh, at baseline and uh, also later, so no effect. The results on the POPQ stage showed no significant differences within or between groups in any of the POPQ points. And number of women with stage zero stage one and stage two did not differ between groups uh, uh, or within groups. The results on the bladder neck position uh, 
showed at rest uh, in the peripheral muscle training group that there was uh, a lift uh, of the bladder neck and also in the control group, so again, no difference between groups. If we look at the difference in change of the uh, position, uh, during peripheral muscle contraction, there was uh, a non-significant difference between groups, but this was borderline significant in favor of the peripheral muscle training group. So to conclude, there was no effect of peripheral muscle training in this randomized control trial, neither on bulging, pop Q stage, or bladder neck position. There was little natural remission. And there seemed to be a need for further RCTs in this area, and because pelvic organ prolapse is a complex condition to treat, maybe one should treat, uh, focus on those who need treatment, those who have symptoms, and also maybe to do individual training instead of uh, group training. I would like to thank my research group, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. The paper is now open for discussion. Okay. Joanne yeah. Sabore from Canada. Yes. 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 Um, uh, good study. Congratulations. Um, in your study, did you look at the postural effect? Did you work on posture? Did you work on breathing pattern? Because that influences the abdominal recruitment pattern, which has an effect on the downward motion to the organ. Well, in the exercise group, we always work on posture, and okay. we also include the respiration exercises. But there are no RCTs in the world showing that postural uh, changes or respiration techniques or exercises are effective for treating peripheral muscle Thank dysfunctions. You. Yeah, Kari, that's um, uh, Peter Dietz from Sydney. Yeah. Kari, that's terribly disappointing, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, it really is. It's, uh, it's a pity. Um, what do you think is, I guess, you know, any muscle training has, uh, has effects on the muscle, and you've shown that. And mm. we expect that this is why people go to the gym. Mm. It has effects on bulk, but it has to have effects on resting tone, on tone, whatever we want to call that. Mm. We would really expect some effect from that. So what's the problem, Kari? Is it that... There, that there's really no way to do this? Is it really that there's no way, no way to use the muscle to make prolapse regress? Or is it just that we don't change it enough? Well, in this study, we didn't show any effect on the resting pressure, first of all. I think uh -huh. also we, there is a natural remission in this period. And also the control group, you know, they are very disappointed because they get into the control group. They want to do the exercises. That's why they say yes to get into this uh, program. So, so, and they are not discouraged from doing uh, peripheral muscle training, of course, we cannot do that ethically. Uh, so, but they did much less, of course, they were not in the exercise group, but maybe this was not enough uh, for this particular condition, because I think also that it's much more difficult to treat pelvic organ prolapse, and we show that in Ingeborg's study, that we maybe, for the future, should do individual and much tougher training. Hello, um, Arnaud Fauconnier from France. Um, what is your plan, plan to follow up this patient? Would you expect an effect in uh, maybe 10 years on, on grade 3 prolapse or something like this? Actually, we have allowance to follow the patients for 50 years <laughs> in our group, so <laughs> it's possible to follow them. But the problem with long-term follow-up studies, especially during pregnancy and after childbirth, is the point that they are getting uh, pregnant again and they have more children. So it's difficult to really control what they are doing during the next years. So I think it's hard to say that, well, this is due to the exercises and this is not due to the exercises. This is disappearing. The, the randomization is disappearing throughout time, unfortunately. Uh, Kari, can, can I ask you the last yes. question? Uh, there, there are data with randomized control trials showing that peripheral muscle training can improve uh, uh, the prolapse stage in uh, not uh, post, not in the postpartum time. Mm. Do you think that this lack of results may be due maybe uh, by the timing of the training? In other words, immediately after delivery, there are still I mean, for the first few months, there are still histological changes in the muscle and the, the connective tissue that may 
uh, alter the efficacy of uh, of the training itself? And maybe the starting later, where the all these changes have been resolved. Yes. I don't know. It's just Maybe so. And, and we also have a cohort uh, which is following the, the patients and we can look at them at, at 12 months. But uh, after then, it's impossible, I think, to, to follow really sure. strongly with this uh, sure. data. So it is different. And you are right. We're going to present later today about the effect on prolapse. And it's quite convincing, I think, peripheral muscle training in middle-aged women. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen.